everybody. Um, I am here with my good friend, Kalise Garner. She is the director of bands at Newburgh High School in uh, Newburgh, Missouri. And uh, she has gracious, uh, graciously agreed to come on and kind of talk to me a little bit about her job and some things as a, uh, as a new director. You're in your second year of teaching, second year of teaching and uh, building a program at Newburgh. And so uh, I just kind of wanted to, first of all, thank you and welcome you. Uh, and say thanks for having this conversation with me. And also just kind of, um, you know, start a conversation on um, kind of the life of new band directors and as a student coming out of college into the teaching uh, profession and kind of see if you had any, um, I kind of want to start by talking about ways that um, young, young teachers, young directors can prepare for a season of band. So you're an instrumental music teacher and um, so tell me, like, if you were a student, uh, or, or not even if you were a student, if you were just starting your first year of teaching in the fall, what would be the first thing that you would do, uh, like, when you got that job, when you're, when you're working towards getting into your classroom? Um, the first thing that I do, well, that I like to do is take inventory. Um, when I got here, I didn't know what I would have. I didn't know how to even plan lessons, because I didn't know what uh, instruments I could use or anything like that. So. Um, I tried to take into account what all I had and how many I had of it. So like that was mostly the instruments um, and trying to see what condition they are in so I could see if I could even rent them out to students if they needed repaired. Um, and also kind of looking at my literature and seeing what what the school had done and what um, seemed to be something they enjoyed playing or what seemed to go well um, and just kind of seeing how I could apply that to my band now because I'm in a position where the band hasn't really been around for a couple of years so I'm just trying to revamp it and revitalize them so I don't really have anyone to look to or to talk to <laughs> from the past couple of years to ask hey well what did you guys do this um, just because there hasn't been a really a program in the past couple of years. Yeah, so, so let's talk about that just a little bit. So uh, obviously you and I have talked about kind of you're in a transitional building phase here with this program. So you, uh, you're in a, you're, you stepped into a program where the instrumental program hadn't kind of existed in a couple of years and you're building it back up. Um, so what, what was maybe some challenges about that, but also maybe some things that were really positive that you appreciated about, you know, start, kind of starting a program almost from the ground up where they're kind of both? Um, so the most difficult thing was trying to talk to kids because I had to recruit during COVID. Um, so our school shut down and that was just about the time that I was trying to get things ready to start getting kids excited about band and wanting to join band. Um, so that was probably the most difficult thing starting up and it, but it, once I got to school, uh, the first week, I just kept going into class and be like, hey, you want to be in band? Do you want to be in band? And it was, it was, I went from like two kids in seventh grade band to like 16. So <laughs> I think my odds increased. Uh, I think that uh, personal connection, just being like in their face and saying, hey, you want to be in band? You don't know anything about it, but you want, <laughs> you want to do this? It's really fun. Um, so once I started doing that and just being willing to talk to kids and like working with them and listening to them, like I had a lot of kids that wanted to also be in art because we have a really great art program here. Um, so I was able to talk to the counselors and to administration be like, hey, they want to do this, but they also want to do this. How can we make both of this work? And they've been so great to like work with me and try to get that um, doable. Sorry for the bell. Um, but probably the easiest thing, um, honestly, when it's pretty easy to get kids interested in an instrument. You just got to put it in their hands and they're just like, this is so great. This is fun. Let me just uh, play it all the time while you're talking. Um, <laughs> but that's probably the easiest thing is once you get them playing and once you they start to see what music can be like, they get more excited. And that's probably the easiest thing is just once you give them an instrument, they're like all, all for you. So, so that process of recruiting students and kind of your first year of teaching was last year uh, during COVID. So that was probably an experience too. Is there anything in that 
season that you would say, Hey, I would have done this differently. Or, or maybe you, you were like, Hey, that really, really worked. I'd love to share that with a new, a new, a new teacher. Um, I probably wish that I had part of my other problem is I didn't know many of the students cause I'd only been teaching for a semester. Um, but one thing that worked out really well is since most of the students during like the beginning of school conferences where you go meet your teacher and everything, they don't come to see me because not all of them have me. So especially in a smaller school, it's harder to like know people when you don't know. It was just hard to know people. So what I did is it was easy for me to just go into my mentor's classroom, who's a a uh, junior high teacher and I just sat there and I waited for kids to come in and I, she would be like hey you should talk to Miss Garner about joining band so that was an easy way for me to recruit because I knew most of the kids that would come to the conferences would come in to that classroom so I was like well this is where most of them are gonna be so let's see if they'll <laughs> join I'll just pressure them into it with Miss Martin helping me too. That's great so Let's talk a little bit about, um, so you're, you're in a small school, your, your program, you said you have like 17 kids in you're in your beginning seventh grade band. So, um, so in a pretty, is that, how big is a class size in the school that you're teaching in, would you say? Um, I'd say around 16. It kind of, the, there's usually two different classes for each grade level going on uh, during the day. And so there's about 16 in each. So we have around 32 or so. Um, so they're pretty small. Um, yeah, yeah, not terribly big. So, yeah. So let's talk about some of the challenges. Um, I would say a lot of if if people that are watching are a small school director, they're going to know some of those challenges. But let's talk maybe about a couple of the challenges you faced programming for a small school and kind of the, some of, some of the conversations we had. Uh, but I, I think that could be beneficial because uh, some people, I think it'd be beneficial for them to hear, hey. I'm not the only person that kind of deals with, with this problem, um, programming for small schools and, and finding um, music and you know, music for concerts that really fits my group. And so let's talk about maybe some of the challenges you had with that. Yeah, uh, music's probably one of the most difficult things, especially in a smaller school from what I've noticed is because you can't just pick anything. And I looked in my music options and I have a lot of options, but it's not really doesn't fit my band currently. I don't have enough clarinets. I don't have enough trumpets. I don't have enough, I don't have enough of a lot of things. Um, so trying to find pieces that fit my ensemble was really just wanted me to tear my hair out because I wanted to make sure we could do it justice, but I also wanted them to play something that wasn't out of the essential elements the entire time. Uh, so I, I, Oh, a couple people direct me to Flexband. Actually, Jonathan, you, you directed me. You were one of the first people to be like, you should try out Flexband. Um, and that's a really great tool because I can pick the parts that each student plays. So if there's a more challenging part, I can give it to probably a player that is more accomplished. Um, and the ones that need a little bit, um, probably an easier look on the music can play probably a, a different part. So that's been really great, but there's even challenges in FlexBand. Um, I ordered a couple of pieces this semester and I'm pretty sure they're gonna be too difficult. So there's still like the higher levels um, of the FlexBand, even though it is divided in just the four to five parts. Um, so I'm still struggling, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna try to make it work, I think. So. Yeah. And I think, I think it's so important that whenever students go into teaching, I, I've heard several, several people who were, um, they're, they're a little ways into their teaching career now, maybe five, six years in, but whenever they first came in, they really had no idea, um, you know, the, the level of programming you have to do for a, a beginning band or a small band, you know, a lot of small school programs just, uh, you know, with, with less students, you have more individualities, uh, you know, more individual students on each part. And, you know, students of teachers have come out of college programs where they're playing, you know, in huge ensembles or uh, in, in advanced ensembles. And it's like all of a sudden you have to really refocus yourself and say, you know what, um, we, we can find music that is not only musical and, and, and sounds good to our, you know, to our listeners, obviously, that's, that's one of the goals is to be musical and to teach our students, but to also has educational intent. Because I think, you know, there's, there's a fine line there between music that 
sounds good and there's kind of a marriage between music that sounds good and also music that has educational intent and then as a small band director a music uh, music that is achievable by young students and so um kind of as we wrap up here just kind of the last thing um that i kind of had on on my mind and kind of was curious of your um maybe thought process here is you know how do how do directors make sure that students in a small in a small school or in a small band really have that meaningful experience you know we all tr I, I i think all music teachers have that belief that music really does affect students and change lives i don't think we would spend all the time studying to be a music teacher if we didn't believe that um but you know is it is it possible for students in a small school to have that that great experience and and kind of how how do you f see that philosophy in your teaching well i think it's just kind of how you look at things if i'm constantly trying to make my high school band that just started up if i'm expecting them to sound like my college band it's just not going to happen um so just trying to find a clear goal of what I want and it might not be the best and it's but it's not going to be the worst just having a goal in mind of you know this is what I would like it to sound like I'd like to have steady beat I'd like steady rhythm I'd like to get most of the pitches right and then add some dynamics and just kind of building up from there um because I it's hard it's hard with small bands because everyone does have their own part and if people aren't pulling their weight it's not going to sound good and being clear with the students like hey this is kind of your responsibility i can keep working on this with you over and over again but you ultimately need to also practice outside of band to get this part because you're responsible for this this if you don't get this <laughs> we're going to have an issue and it's you're going to it's going to be noticeable um so just being clear with them about what's expected and yeah that's it's just it's hard but um not having these great expectations of going and uh being the absolute best because it just won't be for a while but it once you start to develop that pride in what they're doing and just building them up and then keep pushing them on those expectations soon it will be great theoretically um but i'm still learning too so yeah, it's definitely a process. And I think I think we we forget sometimes that especially young students when they're learning like those those small victories are really are really impactful for them. You know, just playing in a concert for young students is really, you know, just so impactful to them as as musicians and as people. So um, so thank you so much, Khalees, for for your time today. I uh, really enjoyed getting to talk to you and uh, we'll talk to you soon. OK.